feel bad for you. I don't think about you at all. I just finished watching Mad Men and I absolutely loved it. I know I'm late to the party here, but Mad Men is a truly phenomenal viewing experience. It's a well-written, well-acted story that explores a lot of deeply emotional themes through several unique perspectives. The show tackles relevant topics even for today, and it does it all amidst the stylish backdrop of the 1960s. I immediately found myself wondering how and why Mad Men never quite seemed to grip viewers of my generation, at least as successfully as other great programming has. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know it's one of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful television programs of all time, but when you compare it to other hits of the last few decades like Game of Thrones, The Office, Breaking Bad, or even The Sopranos, it doesn't have nearly as much of the memeing, the merchandising, the cultural references, or the presence in the general discord. And I don't want to hear any of that it's sexist and racist and outdated crap. What, did I miss the Sopranos after school special where Tony learns the error of his ways? If anything, Mad Men handles these subjects with so much more care and intelligence, and the show appropriately positions injustice and inequality as a part of the times, so then we can watch how the cultural revolution of the 1960s gradually changed things. So throughout this video, I'll attempt to do two things. One, give you five reasons why you should watch Mad Men. And two, try to take a guess as to why Mad Men doesn't seem to have widespread popularity among millennial and Gen Z audiences. I believe I would like a drink. So kick back, relax, grab a glass of whiskey, light yourself up a lucky strike, because here are five reasons why you, dear viewer, should watch Mad Men. Oh, and light spoilers ahead. So this one was pretty much a gimme. I can't really make this list without making a point of the fact that it's just a great show. So reason number one, excellent writing with plenty of thought-provoking narrative direction. First airing in 2007, Mad Men was created by Matthew we Wiener? Wiener, 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 Wiener. Wiener, Wiener, and ran for seven seasons, concluding in 2015. The show centers around advertising executive Don Draper in New York City in the 1960s. Weiner was a writer for The Sopranos, and you can immediately see the same kind of attention to detail and storytelling that his other work was known for. Fun fact, Weiner's script for the Mad Men pilot is what impressed David Chase and got him the job as a Sopranos writer in the first place. Matthew Weiner has stated that he doesn't have much of an interest in actual advertising, but that he wanted to tell a deeply personal story about a man who seemingly had everything, but somehow wasn't happy. Sound familiar? What the fuck? He hired a team of historians to get the exact feel of New York City, and I have to say, they absolutely nailed the timepiece. I mean, I guess I wasn't even remotely close to existing in the 1960s, but I never found myself questioning the aesthetics of their world. There are just so many interesting stories happening in the subtext of the show. As you watch, try to pay attention to Don's isolation and resentment of those closest to him, the different directions and reactions of our female leads, Peggy, Betty, and Joan, and the way the culture shifts of the decade weigh on the psyche of our male leads, Don, Roger, and Pete. The show poses tons of great conflict and questions, but doesn't necessarily offer any easy answers. There's really not much more to say here, so let's just move on to reason number two. Everyone, and I mean everyone on this show, sucks. Not Trudy though, I could never say a bad word about Allison Brie. But seriously, everyone in Mad Men sucks. Don is an unfaithful, untrusting cynic and a coward. He's self-centered and self-loathing. Roger is an indulgent, entitled prick. Peggy is judgmental, self-righteous, and puts her career over everyone close to her. Pete? Don't even get me started on Pete. Betty is vain and resentful and may be the worst mother, outside of Livia Soprano, ever depicted on television. Joan is jealous, belittling, and treats nearly every woman she meets just terribly. Harry, Paul, they're the worst. What about Megan, you ask? Ha! <laughs> she sucks too. Remember, her close friend wants her help to land an acting gig, and then she goes and steals it for herself. Everyone fucking sucks. And I know it sounds like I'm hating on this show, but trust me, it's the exact opposite. It is so refreshing to watch a television series with some damn near real people in it. 
they are motivated by tangible self-interest and as they struggle they all lash out in different but believable ways to me there's nothing more boring than a perfect character or someone who is written to be justified in every situation and Mad Men goes through the time to show you exactly why the characters behave the way that they do without it ever coming across as contrived or preachy. It's just the way these people are. And the writers are able to show you everyday human flaws. They don't get to rely on drug dealing or stealing or murder like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos might. And you're not really rooting for anyone as much as you are rooting for growth. And I, for one, find that to be what makes the characterization in Mad Men so fucking great. Each episode of Mad Men, for the most part, does an incredible job of telling one cohesive story. I do not believe there is a single episode that picks up right where the last one left off. It's often been weeks or months for all the characters. This is a really effective way to structure a story because you have to fill in the blanks about the events between episodes or even seasons. The writers really want you to pay attention to an episode's central story or themes, and they're not just using one season to make a 10 hour movie. It demands a lot more patience and engagement from the viewer. Compare that to the shows we get today like Secession, where each season picks up mere minutes after the events of the one that preceded it. I just don't feel like we get a lot of TV that has such siloed narrative focus anymore. And I love revisiting a time when everything wasn't designed to be an endless scroll of content. Mad Men shows us powerful historical events brought into deeply personal context throughout the progression of a decade. Kennedy vs. Nixon, the Kennedy assassination, RFK's assassination, MLK Jr.'s march on Washington and subsequent assassination, the moon landing, the civil rights movement, the Civil Rights Act, the Vietnam War, the introduction of mainstream television, and even Beatlemania, just to name a few. Once you leave high school, it's easy to forget how transformative this decade really was, and there's something so exciting about knowing how the world is going to play out before our characters do. Each season includes one or more major events of the 1960s and the ripple effect experienced by Don and the gang. I think that's what makes the decade-long arc of the show work so well. Over the course of 10 years, you can see true change. You can see how a man like Don had it all so easy in the older times, but how he was destined to fall from grace, while a woman like Peggy had an opportunity to climb to the top thanks to changes in culture, technology, and general attitudes. To summarize, the 60s were wild and the writers made sure we knew it. One of the most interesting arcs on the show is that of Don's oldest child, Sally Draper. Born in the late 1950s, watching Sally is legitimately like watching a documentary on my parents' upbringing. It's so wild to see how different ideas concerning parenting and children's roles were back then. And then when you throw in my last point about all the major historical events, you can really start to get sympathetic towards baby boomers. Mad Men gives me the closest I can get to experiencing life through my parents' or grandparents' eyes. Who knows if the showrunners knew what they had in Kieran and Shipka from the beginning, or if they realized how strongly her story would resonate with audiences, but they did it. They masterfully designed the arc of a baby boomer for us all to see. And I get such a kick out of discussing the show with my parents. They compare Betty and Dawn to their own parents, and they are so much more engaged whenever Sally is on screen. So why didn't Mad Men have as big an appeal as the other shows I talked about? Well, for one, I think the hook isn't as sexy as the mob, magic, or meth. It's advertising, right? It's something that I think today's viewers would have trouble romanticizing as an art, especially when the ads that run our lives today look a lot like this. Also, I'll admit it's a little hard to watch the first two seasons the first time through. They're intentionally slow and the real meat of the identity crises or the marital struggles are not made apparent until the third or fourth seasons. The show contains a lot of existential themes of boredom, and it's shown through boredom. And I can get how that can be a lot less exciting than a pot-dealing suburban mom or a money launderer on the run in Mississippi. Next, I suppose when compared to shows made today, the star power could feel a little lacking in Mad Men. 
The show is rightly thought of as Elizabeth Moss's vehicle to superstardom, but otherwise, every actor on Mad Men is really just known for being on Mad Men. I mean, I guess John Slattery is Iron Man's daddy, but otherwise, yeah. I guess Vincent Kartheiser was in that movie where Justin Timberlake has to spend literal time as currency. Another reason I could see is why Mad Men could have suffered in popularity is that the show ran during a unique time in television history. It fell on the heels of The Sopranos and The Wire and was seemingly drowned out by being on the same network as Breaking Bad. It wasn't as accessible as other cable shows like The Office or Modern Family, but then it arrived just as streaming services began to launch and TV was just consumed completely differently. HBO even had an app so you could watch new episodes at your convenience, but AMC did not. And my last point is the ending of Mad Men. It wasn't some bombastic, controversial, crazy event like The Sopranos was, which still gets talked about today. And it also wasn't a total disaster like Game of Thrones. I really don't want to spoil it, so I'll keep this vague, but I realized while I was watching the show seven years after it ended, I had never heard anything about the finale. Whether we watched it or not, everyone knows Ross and Rachel end up together, but with Mad Men, there wasn't much pomp and circumstance surrounding the end of the series. Although I thought the last episode was great and remained thematically consistent with the rest of the series, I'm sure a, how should I put this, spicier ending could have really propelled the show back into the spotlight. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know if you agree or think I'm totally wrong here. Maybe everyone's been having secret Mad Men watch parties without me, but I'd love to know why you love Mad Men or maybe even why you don't. Give it a shot. I think the program has a ton to say. Music